Well, hey, everybody, it's Lisa back with another podcast. And today I am super excited to introduce you to Wendy Zanders. Wendy is a professional organizer and your declutter coach who's passionate about helping the special needs military and senior communities take their homes and minds from overwhelmed to simplified. <laughs> I love that so much. An underperformer in grade school due to undiagnosed attention deficit disorder, Wendy worked hard and surpassed the expectations of everybody around her. Early in her career, she found out that she had a knack for systems and organiza organization, but found herself living in a totally disorganized home after several episodes of depression. She helps the communities that she works with get organized by helping them identify what has created disorder in their lives and by helping them create systems so that they can get back in control of their possessions and homes. I love that so much, Wendy. Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, Lisa. I'm so excited for this conversation. It's going to be a good one. It is. We are like, we're dealing with the homeschool community. Of course, we have many military families that are listening in as well. And I think if you're homeschooling, you know that clutter can just be a problem because you're in your home all the time. I grew up in a home with three teenage girls and we had white shade carpet and our home was spotless. I mean, because we were never there, right? We had band and choir before yeah. school. We had school, we had after school jobs and band and choir and, and sports and all the things. And then on Saturday, we all cleaned together. So it never looked like anybody lived there because we right. were gone all the time. <laughs> but when you're homeschooling, you're making all the food, yeah. you've got the pets, you've got the science experiment and, and everybody keeps eating and eating and all the things. So it all can the be snacks, all the snacks. It can be so <laughs> quickly. Your home becomes disorganized, right? Yes. Yes. So and then that's what definitely creating those systems yes. um, every single day, whether it's, you know, let's reset at the end of the day for tomorrow, but right. homes need to be lived in. It should not look like nobody lives there on the cover of a magazine. That's yeah. not, it's, it's, we need to be intentional with how we live and the homes are for living. Yes. Let's live in our homes. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, there's nothing wrong with having a beautiful home, obviously, you know, but uh, but it should be usable. So we're going to talk about a couple things because we're coming up on the holidays. So we wanted to talk about homeschool rooms first, and then we're going to talk about getting set up for the holidays because that can be a whole stressful package all by itself. How to create memories during the holidays, and then prepping for semester two. So we have a lot to cover in this episode. Yes. Let's do um, it. So let's do it, Wendy. Tell us what your thoughts are on homeschool rooms. I have I have a couple of my own thoughts. Over thirty years of homeschooling, we had homeschool rooms. Actually, when we were in the military, we had a homeschool room, and we used it a lot. But um, and then we had homeschool rooms after that. But tell us your thoughts about that, because that was a small blip in our homeschool journey. <laughs> Yes. You know, when it comes to homeschool, so we've been homeschooling since 2019. My son um, finished out um, elementary school. We moved from Maryland to Arizona. And that's when we started homeschooling, 2019. And my thoughts exactly was, oh, well, we need to get that resemblance of public school so he mm -hmm. can continue at home. Yeah. But homeschooling is different. Homeschooling is not public school at home. Right. It really should be how your kids learn. My family, we are all, um, we all have ADHD. So sitting at a desk at school, he had a really tough time. Yeah. So we didn't start with the homeschool, even though I had Pinterest boards of beautiful homeschool rooms that I wanted to, <laughs> to create. Yeah. I didn't because I really wanted to see that, okay, where would he do his schoolwork, right? Mm -hmm. He was sitting on his couch. He was laying in his bed when he was working with his tutors or he did out school classes, all these other classes that he was doing, he was sitting at a desk, but then he was up walking around. Cameras might be off, right? Yeah. Doing those things. So even with my daughter, who's 10, she likes sitting on the sofa or she'd be out on the back porch, driving in the car to our activities. She would do those classes as well. So right. the homeschool room just didn't make sense. So for us, we had a bookshelf for our books mm -hmm. and a lot of our curriculums were online. So we didn't even have paper curriculums because I was afraid of the clutter um, uh -huh. starting my homeschool journey too, right? So sometimes you have the, the curriculums with the clutter, you have tons of books, like is this for library A, library B, because you know, you, you just don't have just one library. you got a couple libraries, some are books that you borrowed from a friend. So you yeah. have to be able to organize all those kind of books mm -hmm. as well, making sure that you don't lose them. But when it comes to the homeschool rooms, I would say if you're a brand new family getting ready to start homeschool, mm -hmm. don't try to recreate public school. 
see where the kids are comfortable. They may be comfortable just sitting in their bed or, you know, out on the back porch doing their homework, because then if you force them to sit at a desk, they're fidgety, Mm -hmm. right? So our, our family were not medicated because we knew that when when he needs a break, we give him a break. We, yeah. He's not on medication to where he has to stay focused and, you know, mm-hmm. in one area at a time. So that's how we kind of found their the kids' learning styles, and we love it. So yeah. don't just run out and get a homeschool room. Now, if you have one and the kids are using it, that's mm-hmm. great. I'm not saying abandon it. Yeah. But if you're brand new starting or you're thinking – to have more structure in our homes, we need to have a homeschool room. You may not. And it is okay to abandon that. Sometimes they just use a dining room table. Yeah. And that's fine too. When we had our homeschool room, we had a step to playscape in our homeschool room because we had a toddler who, who does have ADD. And um, we had a rebounder, those little mini tramps too, before we got a bigger one. And actually a couple of my kids memorized all their math facts jumping. Um, You know, movement is so good for younger kids. I just listened to a podcast yesterday and she was talking about like the neurodevelopment of kids and how movement is so tied into their actual ability to learn. So try to build in learning with the kids. We, we do a lot of memory work in our homeschool. And one of the, one of the ways to learn uh, with memorization is to disrupt what you're doing. So you memorize the line and then you do a burpee, right? Or you memorize (laughs) the line and then you do five jumping jacks. So you're actually creating kind of some disruptions physically, and that actually gets it into your long-term memory. So I love that. uh, you don't really need a homeschool room. And if you have one and you, it's Pinterest beauty, beautiful, we want to see it. So send us the pictures because we have all sorts of kudos for you. But yes, <laughs> ours I is love never it. Pinterest worthy. We used it a lot, but, um, but it was functional yeah. and yeah, functional, functional is good. Yeah. And then you, it can't be Pinterest worthy if it's not functional. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, if it's beautiful and you never use it, you know, uh, you got some great Instagram pictures, right? Right. Um, <laughs> so I, I think that's a good point though. I mean, we, a lot of us come into homeschooling thinking it has to look a certain way to work and really homeschooling, you have so much freedom and that actually, that freedom can be a little overwhelming if you're not used to it. Like you don't have the structure coming with the package of education, but you get this great ability to create the structure for yourself. And you're, you're talking about maybe sitting on the bed or outside or on the porch. We did rebounding. I mean, you get to create the structure that works for you. And that's a beautiful thing. And that's really getting to know your teaching style, as well as it is getting to know your kids' learning styles. I always (laughs) say, when you're looking at curriculum, don't just consider how your kids learn, consider how you teach. Because if you hate yes. it, if you hate it, it's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. When we started our homeschool journeys, my kids, I used to work for the um, for the Food and Drug Administration. So I was, okay. you know, working for the federal government. The kids were in public school or as an IA, she was in uh, pre-K. And, but they were at a Christian school and they were using the Abeka curriculum. So okay. when we started the homeschool journey, we went to the home, the homeschool conference, which was very overwhelming. Oh my goodness. But I felt like I needed to get all the information, came home and I just had so much stuff. I was so overwhelmed. And I just picked Abeka because that's what the kids were doing in yeah. public school thinking, okay, this is what we're going to use. The boxes came. It was so overwhelming. And then three weeks in, there was so much tears from me, from the kids, the frustration, the, I hate this, you know, to all that. And I'm like, this is not what I envisioned for our homeschool journey. And thank goodness we had the 30 day, you know, money back guarantee. I shipped it all back. And then my friend said to unschool. And I was like, what is that? Yeah. Because I felt like unschooling didn't feel like schooling to me. I was like, okay, we're being lazy. We're not doing anything. This isn't good. But really finding your homeschool rhythm, whether it's curriculum or it's an online program or it's unschooling, it's world schooling. My daughter yeah. and I were at, in um, in Mexico earlier this year. Yeah. You know, right. so what does your homeschool journey look like? And it's okay to abandon what everybody else is doing yeah. and really just make sure that your family unit is happy while you guys yeah. are learning. Exactly. I love that. So, I mean, happiness is a good indicator. I mean, I don't, I'm one of those old school moms. I don't think everything has to be fun. Although fun, fun is such an important element to learning, but it doesn't have to be fun. It does have to be fulfilling. And if you don't have fun or fulfillment, then you really need to regroup. And I love how you were willing to just consider that, 
okay, this has worked in the past with this other program, but it's not working here with what we right. need. And so that's like just being aware of your kids and yourself. Um, Cause we've yes. had curriculums that's, that, that have made me cry too, right? <laughs> And You're abandon it. Thing. <laughs> yes, that don't people power through. They say, yes. no, we bought the curriculum. We have to power through. And financially, if that's what you have to do, okay. And then say next year, we're just not going to do that. But yeah. honestly, if it's not working, it's okay to pass it off to another family to say, yeah. we've done a couple units out of this you know, you're welcome to have it. Maybe there's some units they were like, I want to try and see if this is the right fit for us. Yeah. And to say it's par partially used, but it's okay to pass it off and just yeah. stop. You know, right. I love how you say, you know, you don't have to use all of the curriculum to get a lot of value out of it. Um, you can use pieces of the curriculum and then pass it along and you can always resell it. Um, when I, I've done right. hundreds of curriculum and product reviews and I always try to put in there, this worked for us for these reasons, or it worked for these age kids, or it worked for this type of learner, but it, it wasn't a good fit over here because it can be great curriculum for a certain season or a certain kid or whatever. And not a great curriculum for these reasons over here. So right. yeah, curriculum's a tool, just like a schoolroom is a tool, right? Yes. Um, yes. Okay. So we are, it's, it's the end of October. You guys will probably hear this end of October, early November, and we're thinking about holidays already. And a lot of times that can be a little stressful because we're like, we're already, we already have these really super busy lives. And now we're going to add all the Christmas. That's how I feel like my husband's like Santa Claus. Like he loves all the lights and the Christmas decorations. And I'm like, it's going to be dusty. It's cluttery. Oh, it's and like, it makes your home smaller with all the decorations. Your house just gets smaller. I does. I, I love it, but it takes up, like the tree takes up so much. Room. But we live, we love it. We love it. Um, and the lights and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. how do you, how do you suggest as, as a professional declutterer, as we're kind of bringing in all this new stuff into our home? I mean, it's in our home, but you know, we're setting it up and all that kind of stuff while we're homeschooling. How do we set up for the holidays? Cause sometimes I feel like we need to really deep clean and declutter the house before we start start actually decorating for the holidays and getting ready ready for maybe parties or homeschool co-ops coming over, all that kind of stuff. What are your thoughts about that? <laughs> yeah, so this is the perfect time to start talking about this. Um, so many times that this is when your grand the grandparents are starting to think about, oh, this is what I'm going to get Sally for Christmas and yeah. and Ben and Amelia and all these things right there. Their brains are starting to turn. Sometimes. Some I've worked with clients where they have a closet of presents and it's already bought. So, yeah. you know, but if they don't already have things bought, have a list, have the kids, even throughout the year, honestly, have the kids because their birthdays are coming up as well, right? Mm -hmm. Have them, you know, start a, a wish list about things that they want to have. Maybe yeah. take a picture and, and have it on a Pinterest board or yeah. wherever that you can share with family. And this is a great time, especially for your homeschool journey. If so, for, prime example, my son, he's 16. He's a professional welder. He's graduated. Yeah. Um, and for him, this Christmas would have been something out in the garage, like a tool, like uh -huh. a toolbox. He took our whole toolbox with him. So we have to rebuild. <laughs> but if he didn't do that, we would have gotten him his own tools. Right. That would have been a Christmas present, right? He okay. loves working with his hands. He loves cars. He loves um, dirt bikes. And he's a he's a professional welder. So that's what his yeah. presents would have been like, having it on a wish list. Yeah. Now, my daughter, she wants to be an astronomer. She's 10. So science kits, right? So yeah. have those. You can look on Amazon. If you're at a Target, if you're out in a store somewhere, and she says, oh, can I get this? And I'm like, okay, we've already have our curriculum stuff going yeah. but you can put on the list for grandma auntie to buy for you for Christmas so get that list going we, um, we're all about creating memories instead of collecting more things so mm -hmm. it's okay to have that list and say this is what the kids will like for Christmas and I and I hope that the families will respect that instead of well they're going to get what they get and they're going to be excited that's mm -hmm. not that's not really yeah a way to train kids on how to receive presents, right? It's always, it has to be a blessing. It can't just be a curse. Like somebody brings you a dusty lamp or a <laughs> lamp that collects a lot of dust. That's not a blessing. It's beautiful, but it's not functional in your home. So let's, you know, um, yeah. treat each other the way we want to be treated. We want to receive a gift and it be a blessing and not a curse or make the kids say, say thank you, even though the kids hate it. Because the kids are not going to, they're not going to sugarcoat their feelings. 
<laughs> well, I think it's a good, it's a good, you're talking about like, let's have a great conversation with people who are giving you gifts yes. about what would be really helpful to you. Cause I know as a grandparent is, it is much easier to get something that is wanted and that will be received and that the kids will use and those kind of things. And I think I love the idea that you were saying your son would really have liked tools. I mean, that's a great way to think about like just uh, talking with extended family about, hey, you know, we could really use these tools. Some of those tools are really expensive. Yes. And you maybe want to all go in on it together. I love getting tools even for younger kids. Like your daughter wants to be an astronomer. How about starting a fund for uh, a, um, telescope. a telescope or something? I mean, those the, some of them you can get are like not too expensive these days because yeah. the technology is so much better, but some of them are really quite pricey. Um, right. Or another thing, I mean, you were talking about creative memories. How about, um, you know, a gift card to a solarium or something like that? That would yes. be super fun. Yes. Is that what they're Museum. called? Yeah. Um, so like a museum. Yep. We have Mosh. So I'm in Jacksonville, Florida. So we have the Mosh. We have you know, down in, in Orlando and all these different yeah. places. So create those memories. Um, say, hey, we would love a family membership to yeah. the zoo. If you if your family is all about um, the zoo this year and that's, that's the curriculum, they can pay for a membership for the year. Yeah. I just think it's so amazing that you get to see pictures it lasts a lifetime versus yeah. a piece of toy that's going to break or the kids just didn't enjoy. I think doing family memberships mm -hmm. and things like that, even for the family, we personally don't exchange gifts. My husband and I, we will do like a family thing, whether it's a yeah. family trip or because we're all about the memories and less clutter mm -hmm. um, and it's more enjoyable for everybody. And I would say, you know, I mean, if you want to really make this educational, tie it into doing an Instagram post or even start a blog with your kids. We had a, we had a mommy blog for years. I mean, my son was my like most, uh, like he would, he read it every time. Like uh, he'd wow. be like, you missed a week, you know, but because it, it chronicled what we did as a homeschool family. And yeah. for several years, we did a lot. Like we really packed it in with activities and we had a larger family. So I think those kind of things can be important to your kids somehow. Yeah. Um, you know, and then extended family, like we've never really lived around extended family. They get to participate too. Right. I see, oh, you went to the zoo and used our membership and that kind of thing. Yes. So, and the thing is with the, with the blog, that's, so we have to do evaluations every single year. Oh. So you kind of document what you did for the year. So yes, it'd be amazing to have that blog and you can just send that to your evaluator and say, here's yeah. all the things we did for that year. Right. So well, you don't have to keep, help. yeah, you don't have to keep the paper. Okay. So, that's decluttering yeah. right there. And Super. not everything <laughs> and not everything has to be um, homeschool related for Christmas. It could be some that's homeschool things that they want, um, mm -hmm. science kits and things like that. But it is also like, OK, there's dolls and there's, you know, maybe some yeah. clothing items that they, they want a very expensive sweater, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So it could be like clothes, it could be toys, it could be educational. So a mix yeah. of 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 um, of all three or even yeah. more. I think it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's a great time to ask people to get books too. Um, yeah. I, uh, what is it? Something to wear, something to read, something I want, something I need. Um, oh, yeah, there you go. A little mnemonic too. Um, as, you're, <laughs> as you're helping your extended family know what to purchase for you, um, because it can be overwhelming when you get all these little toys, especially girls. Girls have stuff. It's just how it goes yes. in life. Um, uh, yeah, so we try to do open-ended toys that grandparents could add to, like Playmobil or Brio Train um, or Legos. Um, our one of our adult sons just took all of our Legos. Um, the you know, thirty years of children, thirty-six years of children, <laughs> and he took them all. And um, I'm, I was glad to see him go like to a happy home, you know, because no one here is playing with Legos anymore. Um, but yeah. some of those toys can they they just keep going, right? It's the yeah. gift that keeps on giving. Absolutely. Um, okay, so as we're preparing, like we're still in the middle of semester one, but yes. mid semester, we're kind of gearing up for semester two. And we've already touched on a couple of things. Like if curriculum is not working, you don't have to keep using it. I mean, we we're here to give you permission to ditch the curriculum that is not working because not all curriculum is going to work for you or your family. And it might have worked great for somebody else or it might have worked great for you with your older kids and you're just in a different season or you have a different kid or whatever, and you don't have to keep using it. There is, it's a billion dollar industry. So there's different curriculum out there to use. Um, yes. 
how else can we get ready for semester two? Uh, we've put the Christmas stuff away. Uh, we've we've cleaned the house and vacuumed up the pine needles or whatever. <laughs> how do we get ready to smoothly transition into semester two? <laughs> yes, you know sometimes um, families will wait um, maybe mid January, maybe into February, um, yeah. to start. So when we lived in Arizona, mm -hmm. the summertime because it was so hot. Yeah. We did a lot of our schooling during the summer. Yeah. So now that we're transitioning to the beautiful time of the year, wow. you may take uh, your summer might be your winter. So this this is not saying that, OK, everybody's going to start in January because maybe you might wait till April to start you right. know, and just go because it's it's hot. You know, so everybody's yeah. inside at that time. But generally between Christmas and New Year's, you know, you're you're there with your family. Maybe the you know, the kids are um they're on break, they're happy, everybody's, you know, settling in. Yeah. This is a great time to say, let's take two hours before, um, before we settle into the, the Christmas break, take that two hours of the last day of your schooling day, and just say, let's pull out all the activities that we did for this semester, and really purge down. So even if you're, you're restarting, right, sometimes you're saying, I, I have five years worth of homeschooling stuff for the kids, Take one year, just take this one semester and you can work yourself backwards. Mm -hmm. But if you're like, we just started our journey, this is our first semester, what do we do to set up a system? Mm -hmm. I would say, take the last day of your schooling um, session, pull out everything and really go through it. Mm -hmm. If you have a kindergartner, the first day of school, they were just learning how to draw lines or write their mm -hmm. names. Yeah. And now they're writing in cursive. Mm -hmm. Keep a few things from when they learn how to write their name because now they're up leveled, right? Yeah. And then keep the cursive stuff. And then next year you're like, okay, that used to be a scribble. Now they're really writing. And yeah. then you can slowly like purge and keep a a sampling yeah. of their homeschool journey. Because you don't need all the art arts and craft things that they've done all semester. Keep yeah. the ones that's that's their favorites. Mm -hmm. Maybe four or five that's the favorites. So start purging down now because then over their homeschool journey, you have one folder for each each mm -hmm. semester or each school year and it's not so overwhelming. And then right. you're able to scan it in and have a have a digital or you can just have one tote per child. And mm -hmm. once it gets full, you have to purge it. Just give mm -hmm. yourself a I would say give yourself a size like a um a, a hanging folder box. Yeah. And once that's full, you got to purge it because if you yeah. don't set, just set a limit, then it's just going to overtake your entire house. Yeah. So set that limit. This is a great time to start purging down and, um, and just keeping what you, what you like, those yeah. big, those great projects. Yeah. You, you're talking like somebody who's moved a couple of times. <laughs> Oh, yeah, because uh, if you don't purge and you move, it can be really overwhelming to try to pull it all together as you move. But even if you don't, I mean, if you know, there's a lot of I, I always found there was a lot of paper involved with homeschooling. And even um, kids would my kids would leave their homework in the textbooks, like for math and stuff. And it's a good time to just kind of go through um, and say, OK, we don't need this, but we want to keep that paper um, or that presentation or that piece of artwork and maybe want to frame it or whatever. So right. really help your kids develop a discerning eye uh, for what's important to them to keep, because you don't want to just throw everything away. They've worked hard, hopefully, and right. they might really have some investment in a certain thing over another, too. Um, yeah. Again, an opportunity for some great conversations and then revisit those fun memories of, you know, that was a really tough project, but we got through and look at, look yes. at the amazing results <laughs> at the end of it. And now we have fun. <laughs> and now we have fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I love also what you said about, you know, wherever you live, we lived in New Mexico for quite a while and yeah, not quite as hot as Arizona, um, but we have the AC on from like April through whatever. And so we yeah, I mean, so uh, we would do some homeschool during the summer, too, because it was just really um, beautiful out in the spring and the fall, but stinking hot out in the summertime. Yes. And so that was a great time <laughs> to just do school. Um, yeah. And now we live in the far north and it's kind of it's kind of flip flop. We have yeah. I try to like cram school in and then when summer hits, we are outside. Out. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Uh, yeah. Okay. So any other great tips, any other general um, ideas or systems that homeschool parents can put into place? Uh, let's talk about clothes too, just um, oh, as yes. we're talking about seasons and clothes, because yeah. we moved, we had lived in California and New Mexico for 15 years, and then we moved to South Dakota. And so we did not have winter gear and we didn't do that cycle of winter gear. And then we moved here and 
holy mackerel, switching out uh, snow pants and boots as your kids grow, it could take on a life of its own. So help us talk about that. (laughs) Yeah, with the clothes, this is a great time too, you know, if you're getting that for um, for Christmas. But if you're transitioning um, with the seasons, have the kids try on their clothes and say, okay, I can see your ankles in those pants. That's not going to last yeah. till next winter, you know, so let's go ahead and purge that. And as a homeschool family, if you're not doing co-op, if you're not, you know, um, if you're going to church, you have your church clothes over here, but if you're not going to co-op and you're not doing all those big outside activities, you don't mm-hmm. need a whole closet full of clothes like you were in public school, right? Yeah, so right. for us, our things is like 10 outfits mm-hmm. per child. Um, and then like between dresses and skirts and, and tops. Um, but don't go out and buy a whole closet full of clothes because those kids are going to put on the same three outfits. As soon as they come out of the dryer, it is back up on their bodies. So. <laughs> right. It's true. <laughs> it's true. Actually, I think that's one of the benefits of homeschooling. You don't have to spend so much money no. on clothes. Your kids aren't so attuned to what is hip and what's popular. And um, it really helps your kids develop a sense of, like clothes are functional. They're not status symbols necessarily. Right. And it's, I think it's a healthier way to approach clothing. Again, clothing as a tool. <laughs> yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, you don't have to get the latest thing. You can just wear what's functional and uh, obviously look nice, but um, it kind of keeps that perspective for your kids too. But yeah, I do think there's something to be said. I mean, we would go through gloves too, because we live on an acreage. So we'd have work gloves and then snow gloves. And, and by the end of the year, half the time they were mismatched. So we actually got gloves for Christmas almost every single year and hats and stuff like that, which is kind of a boring Christmas present. It was like yeah. underwear, let's face it. But uh, if you don't have gloves, you pay. So they, they were necessary and appreciated. Uh, and not as much as the Legos probably, but yeah. 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 One of the things that I would say um, that we haven't talked about is the different the different styles of schooling. So we, mm-hmm. in our homeschool, we do um, interest-based learning. So yeah. without us doing interest-based learning, we never would have known that our son loves working with his hands. Mm. Um, one of the things that we did, we got him a dirt bike off yeah. of Facebook marketplace for $300. It didn't work. It looked like garbage. And I was like, oh no. But that, was his, but that was his curriculum for the year to rebuild this um this dirt bike and I was like oh I'm gonna get you the manual so you can read it he's like no mom I do not (laughs) I do not want to read he doesn't like to read yeah he would read if he has to but he does not like to read so what what he does do he can go on YouTube yeah research how to fix the motor Mm -hmm. or the engine or why is this bike not running and then go on eBay and get parts. So that's what we were doing. We were buying him parts. He would replace those parts and he would get the bike up and running. But I didn't realize that he, he really hated reading and, Mm -hmm. but he can watch a video and he can figure that out. But our daughter wants to be the astronomer. I'm trying to pull all these resources. Like we're part of 4-H, you know, so you don't, Mm -hmm. honestly, you can homeschool for free. You don't feel like you have to go out and buy those curriculums and, yeah. and do all these courses. You really could pull resources from the library yeah. and those kind of things as well. So you don't have to clutter up your home. But what we did for our son is we created a curriculum for him and yeah. said, okay, here's the YouTube videos. Here's the, you know, the, the lessons that you're going to be working on. The same thing with my daughter. Like I'm getting with, I'm like, okay, should I create a Facebook group? We joined Nethis. Um, they, it's the Astro... I always get it wrong. The Astronomer Society, uh-huh. where you know adults will bring their telescopes, and we can go and yeah. and listen Very to cool. lectures and things like that. That yeah. is homeschooling. You don't yeah. have to do all the teaching yourself. You right. can exactly. The, the yeah. library have science classes. The library have homeschool things. Get yes. all those resources and yeah. and use that. For us, our biggest expense for homeschooling, I would say, is gas. It's like yeah. we are always. <laughs> gone to the library and you know to Nephis and to the, yeah. the local university because they do um science things and but that's our biggest expense I would say is gas mm-hmm. well <laughs> so. I want to I just want to point out like you're you're really creating a traditional unschooling environment like a John Holt unschooling environment and I think a lot of people use the term unschooling uh where really they're playing a lot of video games they're not really being really intentional about a delight directive. <sighs> 
environment, learning environment. But I do want to point out, you can absolutely homeschool for free. And it's probably going to take either time or curriculum, money, resources. Um, you're either going to have to buy them or find them. So it's going to be time or money. I, it yeah. seems like it goes that way. Now, some kids are really resourceful on their own and they can go find those things, but they're going to need you to drive them places. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <That's exact. laughs> um, but there's so many opportunities for our kids right now. And I love that, that you're really having your kids be intentional about the doing and I, I just want to say, like, your kids are watching YouTubes in conjunction with learning, but they're not just hanging out on video games or just, right. saying, and, and there's no problem with that within reason. But if your kids are doing it for hours on, on end, they're, they're probably not doing, doing, which is so important to learning. Right. Um, but I love that. So, so fun. Um, okay. So anything else, uh, that you have as a professional organizer, how do you get into organizing as a profession? I mean, that's to me, that's kind of a fun way to, to, to earn a living. <laughs> yes. So I, am um, a United States army veteran, I joined the military when I was 17, wow. went off to busy training when I was 18. And, when my family and I are from Trinidad and Tobago, when we moved here to the United States, I was 14. And I, even though I had undiagnosed ADHD, um, I was making honor roll, yeah. but I was memorizing so much that once the test was done, do not ask me anything else on the on the test because I have no idea. I left it all on the paper. I yeah. was just memorizing and then dumping it on the paper to get yeah. my A's and and to make honor roll. And I found myself on a Friday afternoon just to kind of de-stress. I was cleaning my room for polishing my furniture. I can still smell the pledge and <laughs> doing my laundry. It was the decluttering and the and the um the resetting was really calming for me. Um, and when I joined the military, I took the ASVAB and I scored really high for logistics. Uh -huh. So I was the unit supply specialist and the unit armor. So I maintained all the weapons and ammunition for a unit. And you can think about um, Home Depot and Staples having a baby. And uh -huh. we had small, like small tools and supplies, um, like papers and pens. We will maintain that as well. So just keeping that stuff organized. I absolutely love it. Um, I mentioned I used to work at the, um, at the FDA. I was an executive assistant mm -hmm. and my husband and I were doing financial peace university. And I realized that I couldn't make any more money. You can work more on your 40 hours, but you would get credit time. So it's credit time towards taking time off, but yeah. not more income. And I was like, okay, how can we pay off this mortgage really, really fast? And somebody told me, find something that you love and do it as a business. Uh -huh. And I said, well, I love to organize. I've done pantries. So I'll be like, oh, let me do that. Let me declutter that. There was one time um, we had a couple offices at our job and it was just full of furniture and old computers and things like that. And they said, hey, we have a director that's getting ready to start in a couple of weeks. We need this room cleaning out and I was like I'll do it <laughs> <laughs> so that's when I realized I love organizing more decluttering than not Pinterest not bins and yeah. color coordinating the books yeah that, no. <laughs> no 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 please do not co color coordinate the books but some people love that system yeah. um but honestly the decluttering I love decluttering and yeah. decluttering is organizing so yeah. I was one to know that like when you yeah. say decluttering you yeah. are organizing yeah yeah, yeah. fun and that's how my business got started yeah wow i mean there's okay so we're at the end of summer and there's flies oh they drive me crazy oh, uh, <laughs> i wish they would take a clue declutter yes. out of my house um i think that's kind of, that's interesting because the the people who are not naturally organized or like to declutter they're like you like that how does that work yeah. uh, but i i I do think just developing systems for your home and you're really, when you're talking about like at the end of one semester, the beginning of the other semester, you're talking about the rhythms of your home. And I think it's really important to be aware, even just take some time and observe the rhythms of your home, whether you live in the South or the North, your rhythms are going to be different, maybe backwards. Um, if you have, if you have younger kids or older kids, those rhythms are going to be really different because yeah. little kids take a lot of physical time and older kids take emotional time. And oh, so yeah. <laughs> how you come and how you organize and the systems that you have are going to be different because of the time demands on you as well. Yeah. So just being aware of those, then you can create the systems around those rhythms and routines that you naturally yeah. do as a family. Yeah. And, you know, I, we, we, in, we include um, life skills in our yeah. homeschool journey. Yeah. Um, don't, 
be very important. It's very important to include that. Yes, math yeah. and English and science is important, but yeah. those life skills, because we're raising future husbands and future wives. So, yeah. And then there's, there's stay at home moms. Yes. But sometimes both, both parents are yeah. working. So right. you want to make sure that, you know, the husband and the wife knows how to yeah. take care of the baby and do dishes and do laundry and, you know, cook and all that, because they really, um, combining those efforts really do help the family run. So teach those yeah. kids. I mean, doing yeah. chores and stuff at home is homeschooling. Don't mm -hmm. make it seem like, oh, this is going to be separate. It's yeah. not. It's part right. of the daily living. It's part of taking right. care of the home and the family. Right. Because, I mean, that's what we're doing as adults, right? We're working and we're managing our home and the education and stuff like that. I love how you mentioned you, you've done a lot of outsourcing for your kids too. And I think um, as you're thinking about curriculum and um, how to really educate your kids well, don't underestimate outsourcing. It's a great tool yeah. for, for parents, especially if you're homeschooling and working and juggling a, a couple of different roles at the same time. Um, and then it could be a great tool for you to use where you don't feel like you have the emotional clutter of you have to learn a curriculum and teach your kids that curriculum. You can outsource it to somebody who already knows it and loves it and is going to, and you know, share that passion and love of the subject matter with your, with your kids. Um, right. And, and you don't, it doesn't make you a fake homeschooler. I don't know that that's a thing anymore, but um, don't worry about that. Out, outsourcing is a great um, tool to use as a homeschooler. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. We outsource um, math and English mm -hmm. um, as, a, as we're doing unschooling and yeah. the science really rose to the top for my daughter. Mm -hmm. For me now, I'm like, okay, I'm going to build a curriculum, you know, to help her with, yeah. with that but the math and English. So, and then giving yourself permission to don't feel like, oh, well, my daughter, she's 10, she's in the fourth grade. She needs to be, you know, at this level with the public, yeah. with the public school neighbor. It yeah. is okay. And I felt some shame too, when mm -hmm. I realized when my daughter said she wanted to be an astronomer and I'm like, okay, wait a minute, your kindergarten math, mm -hmm. which is sixth grade science. I'm like, Ooh, oh no, <laughs> behind. And it's like, no, yeah. now she's realizing I want to be an astronomer now, what do I need to do in math to bring yeah. that up? Because yeah. you need math to be an yeah. astronomer. Yeah. So now it's outsourcing. Um, she has a teacher that's that's her tutor for math and yeah. English while we do all the fun. I like doing the fun things. I don't like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so work in your zone of genius. If you yes. are an artist, do all the art stuff and maybe outsource the math. My husband loves history. That's what he does, you know, yeah. so have those even grandparents yeah. enlist yeah. them and say hey grandpa you were in the military you love yeah. history would you mind teaching you know the, yeah. the history curriculum involve the whole family have the aunts the the, the uncles invite everybody to teach something yeah. if they really are willing if, yeah. they, if they are not um if they if they're not excited about your homeschool journey don't include them yeah. but if they're really loving what you're doing invite them in and say we would love you to teach even if they, they can come in at career day you know yeah. And teach the kids Fine. what they do, but really enlist and, and outsource and work in your zone of genius. You will yeah. be, you will have a lot more fun when yeah. you are working in your zone of genius and outsource yeah. the rest. Yes, exactly. Um, you know, I, okay. Last point. And then um, I know this has kind of gone on a little bit, but you were saying okay. your daughter's in sixth grade science and kindergarten math. I like, look, most of us are not in one little path of a grade for all of our stuff. And, and I think even if we're in public school, we're not right. Like we're a little ahead here, a little behind there or really way ahead. And so just really assess your kids and figure out where are they, where are they actually at and what do they need to get to the next level? Um, and, you know, with the end goals, if your daughter wants to be an astronomer, she knows she's got to get that math up to speed. So how can you help her get there when she's motivated or your son is motivated, whatever, uh, when your kids are motivated, they're going to bring that to the table too. And then you have a lot more to work with. Um, and then, yeah. And then to enlisting the support of um, the homeschool moms, like, like you, Lisa, that's been homeschooling for 30 years. Mm -hmm. When we were in Mexico, we were at the world schooling summit. And one of the moms that's been homeschooling for almost 30 years or yeah. even more, she said, if you have a child that's interested in the sciences, but doesn't like math to teach physics. Mm -hmm. And I, I was oh. like, wow, that totally makes sense. So now instead of focusing on the math, focus on the physics because then it would when, when the math comes it then it would make sense yeah because yeah maybe right now math doesn't make sense to her 
So mm-hmm. why force it to say, oh, we got to get you up to, you know, yeah. fourth grade math or sixth grade math, you know, mm-hmm. you need to be here. No, yeah. it's okay. It would come when the time comes. So mm-hmm. teach physics, teach a different side yeah. of the brain to, right. to make it all click. Yeah, I love that. Okay, you guys, I hope this has been somewhat helpful to you as you're getting ready for the holidays and gearing up for um, hopefully what will be a fun celebration in the middle of the year and then second semester around the corner, which is crazy to think this fall has gone very, very quickly. Um, But Wendy, super fun to talk to you. You guys will put links um, in the show notes so you can find Wendy if you need help with even more specific decluttering or organization, you can find her and um, be sure to like, share, and tell your friends about this podcast. And we will talk to you guys next time. Thanks for joining us. Yes. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks for having me. Yes.